In this video, I will show you how to use more buttons. So let's start with this. We will remove all the text inside the column and we will replace that with button. So I will show you which are the main button used. If you write button and press control space, you will see all possible uh, things that you can put with the button. So first you have the flat button that is pretty much used. We have as well the material button, this one. We have the icon button that we have already used. So this, that's been three of them right now. The outline button and finally the raise it button. Okay, so the flat button, the material button, the icon button, the outline button and the raise it button. Those are the main popular buttons with further. So let's start with the raise it button. Okay. In the name, we can see that it said raise it. That means we'll have a little elevation on this button. Then we will change the null for an empty function. If you remember, this is the input and this is the trigger of the empty function. Okay. We will add our comma right here. And by example, if you don't know that you need to add a comma, you can go over container with the error, as you can see there on red. And this will tell you what is the error right now. So the error is always at the end of this big box. So if you go down, oops, sorry, you will see expect to find comma. Okay. So we know that we need to put a comma here. Okay. After that, what we will do is we will add something inside our raise it button. So a text, we will say comma after the unpress argument, and we will add another argument with control space. We have right here, the child. So we will use this one and inside we will add a text widget like that. And we will say my button. Here we go. Now we can format document. So I will use the command shift alt F like that. And what we can do is change the text, by example, inside those text information, we can change the text every time that we click on my button. Okay. How are we going to do that? First, we will need to create a Boolean. So it's the best time to introduce the Boolean. Okay. First of all, just before that, what we will need to do is when we click on the button, if we want the, the, the text to change, we need to rebuild the screen entirely. Okay. What I mean by that is when we press on this button, we will call a function called the set state. And when the set state run, the build will restart and will change the value with the new value. To have access of the set state, we need to go over the stateless widget, refactor, so we can press control dot like that and refactor with a stateful widget. So when we have a stateful widget instead of a stateless widget, that's mean that we can refresh the screen. So the user can have some input and change the value, change the UI of the screen. But if you are, we are using the state less widget, that's mean that the screen can't never change. It cannot change. So right now we have put our stateful widget instead. And now what we can do is after the class under my app state, just before the build, we will create our Boolean. So a Boolean is a true or false value. And now we will say, uh, we will call the Boolean my new Oops, my new button, by example. And we will say this is equal to false like that. And I will put a semicolon at the end. How I know to put a semicolon? If we go over false, you see expect to find a semicolon. So this is the best trick. When you have an error, you go over and you see how to correct it. Okay. Now we have a button that say false. Next step will be if we go back inside our raise it button on press, what we will do is we can call my new button. Okay. 
now we have excess of a value true or false. So when it will be true, we will trigger something. And when it will be false, we will trigger something else. Okay, how are we going to do that? First, we will need to create a variable for our string. So this is a pretty complex video right now. Okay, to do that, we will go right after the Boolean. We will say string and we will create our variable my text, by example, is equal to hello, like that. Okay, so when we start the application, my text is equal to hello. And we can reuse the value my text right here instead of row. You can press Ctrl D three times to select both of uh, those three. And then you can uh, put my text. So the value my text. This is a variable and it is this one. So now we will see hello right here instead. If we remove the error right now, I will just remove just to show you. We will see right here. So if I restart the application, because right now we need to restart because we have changed for a state full widget. Now you can see hello right here. I will reput what I had, my new button. And what I will do is when I press on it, then the value my new button that is currently false, if you remember right here, this new value will be equal to the reverse of the same value. So that's mean the my new button is equal to false and be the inverse of false. So it will be true after. So every time that we will press this button, the value will change. Okay, and how are we? How can we uh, look at this? We can use the value false or true, and we can say before the text. So I will remove two, uh, two, uh, two like that. I will just keep one. And what we can do? We can say this is the final step. We can say my new button. So is this true? If it's true, then I will say this is true. And in the other case, if it's false, then put hello. Okay, so right now when we run the app for the first time, it say hello because my new button is false. My text is hello. If we go on the text, it say this, is it true? Then put this, otherwise put my text. And because this is false right now, it will put my text, hello. But when we will press on this button, we should change the value for this is true. But as you can see, this don't change. And this is because we need to call the set state as I told you earlier. So on the on press, I will pick, make a space and I will call the set state right here like that. So this function. And now final, final step is to take everything right here the new button is equal to the reverse of my new button. Put it inside the set state. And now when you press on my button, this value change for this is true and hello. This is true and hello. So right now we have used Boolean variable string. We have used as well a set state to refresh the application every time that someone click on a button and we have triggered something on the application when we press the button. So we have learned way much today. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it and see you on the next one. Bye.